Of course, my alarm goes off. I was about to make the video and go along. How are you all doing? You like my new fancy glasses? I got them from France last week, about two weeks ago. Yeah, I don't want to break them because they're expensive. Anyway, I hope everybody's keeping well, you gorgeous bastards. I'm, I'm okay myself. It's wild and windy and stormy here in the west of Ireland. Uh, I hope you and your loved ones are all keeping well. There's a lot to talk about this week, so this might be a pot of tea one. Maybe a pot of tea and a cake or a scone or a sandwich even. Hmm. A lot's been going on since I've last made a video. An awful lot, actually. Uh, the weather. Let's talk about the weather. The the, the Renf Well, there's two weathers. The psychic weather. Renfielding is absolutely out, off the scale. I'll talk about that later. But the regular weather, which is the scene that the two kind of reflect each other. The regular weather, the amount of photographs of tornadoes in Ireland taken in the last week or two is astounding. I can remember the last time I saw a photograph of a tornado in Ireland was 2000, I think, in 1999. Now they're like, there's loads of them, loads of them. And uh, the, these, these, these tornadoes, are, rep, are these, these are cyclones, and these are representing the psychic state of the nation. I won't talk about Ireland and what's going on in Ireland right now, but in a bit. But before I get there, uh, during the week I met these very nice American people, and uh, they you know, don't know who I am. I don't know who they, they were. I was introduced a friend, friends of a friend kind of thing, and they started going on about about Trump. Uh, it was like I couldn't believe it. It was like I know I didn't answer. I didn't. I didn't get involved. But it was Trump derangement syndrome type a million. And I was really quite surprised by it because it, it came out of nowhere and their whole personalities changed. Uh, they became manic. They went from being very kind of cordial and pleasant to manic. And eyes widening and, you know, oh, I hate him. You know, I hate him. I hate, he's got to be taken down. And then I asked, well, you know... Why? What's the big problem? I haven't been paying attention to him in American politics. Oh, he's a Russian spy, a Russian asset. He took money from the Russians. It was on his laptop. They found it all over it. Uh, that he's raped all these women, uh, porn stars. That he's a gangster and a crook and all this stuff. It was like the litany of the, the conspiracy theories that we heard about Trump for the last five years. In one half, all, all the classics, you know, the Russia, Russia, Russia thing. And so I sat there and I said, well, I, I, they, 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 they said to me, what do you think of Robert Kennedy Jr.? I mean, I guess they think, you know, that I'm Irish. I, I, give, I give a fuck <laughs> for that reason alone. And I was like, well, you know, I don't, he seems like, a, he actually he seems like a very sincere man. But again, I, I, I don't believe in. I'm not. I'm not really much into voting and politics and stuff. Like, oh, you must vote. You must vote. It's your only thing. And thing. And I said, I don't trust any politicians. And I says, I said, and just just for the sake of conversation, I turned around and said, well, what about all the stuff about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's dealing with Russia and, and all this kind of stuff and the Ukraine? And they go, oh, but that's just conspiracy theory. So it's quite remarkable how. When it's about Trump, you know, that, that's how these, these kind of left-wing progressive types are. When it's, uh, when it's something they don't believe in, it's automatically, you know, from a, from a dogmatic point of view, it's automatically conspiracy theory. But it's something that you can point to on their side, you know, regardless of how much facts you have or don't, it's automatically declared, conspira you know, conspiracy theory. So they, they, they have conspiracy theory, you know, a la carte. Uh, these dogmatic people it's only it's only stuff that makes their side look bad that's conspiracy theory everything else is the truth especially if it's bad things about their enemies trump in this case and well nearly always trump but not just him this week now nigel farage i don't know if you've seen this but his bank in england suspended his business and his personal account and they didn't give a reason for it even though he asked for it they never sent a letter saying why he then tried to open the accounts of other banks and was refused now and they also was doing the same to members of his family now i'm not going to get too uppity about this because we don't know the the main is there more to it i don't know now i don't have a problem with farage per se i'm not i don't like conservative politics as such but 
you know, I don't think he comes across as a monster, but you don't know, reader. So, and, and a part of me kind of wishes they did have dirt on him, that he was, you know, a Chinese agent or something, a Russian agent or something. Because then they'd have a justified excuse to shut down his account, or gun runner or something. But if they've just shut down his account uh, because they're getting back at him for Brexit, or which remember the city of London was usually a support of Brexit, or because he's starting a new Conservative Party in the UK, well, this is a very terrifying and worrying development uh, because you'll be, you and I will be next. It's it's throwing down. It's what we're seeing again. It's like what I always say: this is a sci science fiction movie from the future. That if. Uh, if this is what it is, and it's, 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 it's you know, Farage's story is absolutely 100% true to, and the legit, then, you know, we're in, we're in, we got, you know, the war is on, they've attacked, the, the war is on, and the banks have, the banks are now, you know, the banks have decided to become like the SS of the, of the globalists, of the establishment. And this does not bode well for the future because then we're looking at a Chinese, you know, credit system social credit system and they're basically doing it to the troublemakers at the top now it could be that they're trying to drive him out of england you know so he doesn't start a party so he can start to open a bank account overseas and also they're worried there's, there's a great terror there's a tree moving in the the side window of that car there that's where it's, it's like someone waving to me that's how windy it is but um Yes, that's the one to keep an eye on. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying he's a, he doesn't come across as an evil man. But part of me is hoping he is. Not because I want to be an evil man, but I want them they, 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 they actually have a, a legitimate reason for shutting him down. But I don't think they do, and it's not looking good. And, uh, and this, this is probably just to stop him from starting. It's the same thing they're doing with Trump, maybe, in America where they're doing everything to try and derail his election. Have you noticed that stopped, though, ever since uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr. has come along? Suddenly, it's not a two-horse race against, you know, Joe Biden and Trump. But the, the Trump derangement syndrome was fascinating to watch. I've seen it online, and I've kind of half-assed seen it in, a, on a, in people. But to actually sit there in a quiet room in conversation and to see it manifest... It shows really what an incredible magi uh, Trump actually is. And you see, Trump the range and syndrome is nothing more than uh, the, 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 the charismatic power of Trump having a quantum entangled lock upon them, a, a charismatic lock. And they can't, and, and the more they hate, the more they feed it. Remember, I've been saying that for years. The more you hate someone or something, the more you feed it. This is why you have to practice the law, the law of detachment. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you know, live exclusively in the city of the nine gates. I'll tell you what that is later. But uh, so this is a, the law of deta detachment, which is a law, a natural law. You know, a sub, it's kind of a subset of natural law. And there's an actual Hindu word for it, but I can't, I can't remember now. But basically, it it means that you, you you observe things casually, but you don't get entrapped in them. Otherwise, you become deranged, like Trump derangement syndrome, where you are Renfield if you don't fully understand it. You know the people who say, "Oh, I wish I was an NPC or a normie because ignorance is bliss." No, they they they, they still go through. They still have anxieties and Renfielding. Because they don't have the internal inner monologue to actually process the thing, they um, they become Renfield, so they they get fucked up by it as well. At least when you're aware and understand things, you have wisdom. You know, you have wisdom, and you are sacrificing. You're sacrificing this concept of what's the word? You know, being entangled with the matrix you know, derangement syndrome, in order to attain wisdom. So you have wisdom, you know, it's like, uh, that, that, so the whole thing is you, 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 you're not giving your energy away, because when you give your energy away to someone you hate or dislike, what you're doing is actually depleting it for yourself. It's a very Christian thing. You see that with people who, you know, Christian, because of this turn the other cheek thing, Christians become very frustrated, so they hate even more. 
they want to destroy even more. And that's why when you see them converting to things like Nordic paganism, uh, they just become, you know, f fanatical Christians in another direction. But the same impetus still exists there. There is no, you see, this, this is, you see, this is why I don't like a lot of this Nordic paganism thing. Because I don't think it's, it, it, a lot of it doesn't seem to, although, you know, the mythology and all that, but the actual modern practice of it doesn't seem to have any yoga involved in it. You know, this is what I've always strived to try to find within Western mythology is, is a concept of yoga, you know, a concept of where is the yoga, you know. And so if you are just like going to hail, hail Odin, and you know, you know, and you, you you know, having vendettas against your ex-wife or something, that's is that's that's there's, there's no there's no path to yoga in that, none at all. You know, because you're still trapped in the material world, and that's you see the thing is that like, this is the, the, you know, Trump derangement syndrome is him casting a fascination spell upon these people without him even trying. He's not met them, but they're quantum entangled. They can't detach. You cannot grow spiritually, emotionally, mentally, or any other way if you're quantum interlocked with someone else at the, with their charismatic charge. And that's what, that's what all these Trump derangement syndrome, that's, that's why their eyes went wide. They became very, uh, you, they, they became very unlikable. Suddenly I didn't have a problem with them, but the, it wasn't the fact that they disliked Trump. It was the, the actual, the, the manifestation of what appeared in them that put me right off them. You know, it would have, it's just laughable, the thing that they thought, like, that, you know, rumors against Trump are true, but allegations against Biden are conspiracy. That's funny. But when you see personality change to the point where they're kind of hostile towards you, it's, it's, it's very off-putting. And you see that the Trump derangement crowd. And this is because there's an inherent inner frustration that on some psychic level, they know that they've been quantum charismatic interlocked with Trump. And... They can't escape him. It's the same as these, these, these borderline women who are trying, you know, who are like on these these forums trying to get back at their husbands, their ex-boyfriends, and they always say things like, "Well, I've moved on." You know that song like from South Pacific, "I'm gonna wash that girl man right out of my hair," and that kind of thing. And but they haven't because they're and that the more you know they hate and the more they interlock into them. And the more they feed their psychic energy and emotional energy to the target they hate. And then they're shocked when the, the ex-husband suddenly gets married to a beautiful girl and has a new family and everyone's happy. Because she, she, what, what she's tried to destroy, she's actually fed. And this is the, this is the law of detachment. Now this is very important with the system. Of course it is. Because this is why I tell people, don't get involved too much in politics. You know, people ask me, like, you know, how do you build your charisma? It's the easiest thing in the world. You know, charisma is very easily built. And how you do it is the law of detachment. You amplify your nervous system by not wasting your psychic energy upon things that you can't change. I.e., no matter how much you hate Trump or Putin or Zelensky or Nigel Farage or anyone, the, the less psychic energy the less charge there is in your central nervous system because you've depleted that energy. Where you have a law of detachment, it's like a muscle, charisma is like a muscle. What happens then is your central nervous system amplifies. So this is why, you know, they, they, this, they want, they deliberately try to do this to us and they do do it to us. You look at the 9-11 thing or any time there was a war, do you remember when you had like the Gulf Wars on? You'd have people glued to CNN or BBC, just glued to it glued to it you know news around the clock don't you know? and that, that they were quantum entangled with the the broadcast of these wars or news and they're like, i'm watching this i'm watching this you know what i was i was very well portrayed in a different way it was in the movie science joaquin phoenix he's obsessed with the ufos that have started appearing all over the world at least that's one to be obsessed with unless it's blue beam and he just can't stop watching it and that's, that's, that, you know, the best thing to do would be stop watching it and start preparing to fight. Start preparing to deal with it. Now, fight doesn't mean, you know, that necessarily. Fight means to make contingency that you'll be okay in case the worst happens. So there's definitely huge frustration in people who are quantum entangled, but there's also tremendous frustration and people don't understand why they're sh they're psychically shattered and that's ireland right now
Now, here in Ireland this week, I've been talking about that there's been huge thunderstorms and everything in the last week or so. There's a major scandal has broken at the national TV station, RTE. RTE is the Irish version of BBC, but they're even worse than not only do they get the license free, they also get advertising income, so they're, they're double evil, right? So they're double, they're double parasites. So, and they pay their, they pay their staff who have list, their, their stars who have listenership and, and viewership that would be the equivalent to a, a small regional station in the UK or in the North America, Hollywood level salaries. You know, that's what they paid them. And they're all incredibly mediocre. Now, one of the characters, Ryan Tuberty, who was the host of what we're told is the biggest show, but the numbers are terrible. Eh? They lie about the ratings. Um, and I can tell you how they lie about the ratings. You look at any alt media things, and you compare any video I make to a video on the RT site or Stephen Sutton's uh, videos from. We the pe uh, articles from We the People, they get shared wildly more and more greater than any of the mainstream, like things like the Irish Times. So the mainstream is dead, dead. And remember this thing of you going, we're going to take down RT. Remember you're focusing your energy on it. So be very careful with this. Now I don't know what's going on with the RT. We could be getting scammed here. We could be being played into a trap. This could be a scam by the globalists in Ireland to fire all their Irish presenters and replace them with a, with a, a multi-ethnic, you know, new, new, new presenter culture. We don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm just saying we have to be careful. These are these things people play. And uh, Torbidi may be in on it. You know, the, my, this may be, all be a, a big piece of theatre we're given. And the fact that the government immediately wanted government hearings and stuff instead of criminal things, it tells me that they're in on it, that there's something going on there. So don't be getting too carried away with yourself thinking, or she is finished, and they're going to be... Don't, don't be, you know, that, you know, that's a bit naive now. Don't, that's, you know, they may well be gear, clearing them out to make them even more of a propaganda agency for the government. And you have, like, you switch it on, and you know all the ads on TV all have black and white couples, even though black and white couples are incredibly rare. It's all part of... Um, the agenda, the the message. So don't be surprised if you know you're thinking, oh, Orty is finished, and then it comes back on with an even bigger bit budget, an increased license fee, and all the presenters are you know have names like uh, Wi-Fi passwords or wearing burkas and or scarves and veils and and all this kind of thing. You know, so don't be don't be surprised if that happens. Of course, they won't pick people from the largest ethnic minorities in Ireland, such as Portuguese, not Portuguese, Polish, and, you know, Polish and English and uh, Eastern Europeans. No, no, they'll pick them from the Middle East and things like that, or Africa. That's what they'll do. But, I mean, you just laugh at that. That's just the game they play. It's so obviously transparent. It means nothing. You don't have to get involved in, in terms of, you see, they, they're desperately trying to stoke up a far right, and something that doesn't exist in Ireland is a far right. But they, they have they have far right derangement syndrome here, where they think the far right is is under every every stone. There is no far right. There's just people who are Irish, and they're calling them far right. So they have to they, they want to genuinely, genuinely turbocharge this sensation, this uh, this thing, to create it. So they, they, they it's 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 goading and antagonizing. You know, and when you're goaded and antagonized. And Irish people have been amazing at this so far. We haven't gone, you know, I'm, I think it's absolutely wonderful. It makes me proud, well, some are proud, <laughs> to be Irish, to see what happened since January when the people who are protesting the direct provision centres didn't become all National Front or British National Party or anything like that. They didn't turn to hatred. They were there was black people in those crowds. They just wanted a, a fair crack at the whip, and some truth and transparency. The other side became completely quantum entangled with them. The success of the protests, um, they were kind of like soft riots, really. In Ballymun, Fingless, and Eastwall, were successful because the left fed them. The left were going down, going far right, far right, far right, and going far right, everywhere, oh, far right. I fed them, I fed them, you know. Remember, the greatest way to defeat your em enemy is apathy. Remember that? Apathy is the, the way to defeat, is the way to win SNS espionage. Uh, because you don't, uh, 
you don't give them any energy. Uh, I think, you know, there's a lot to that. You know, if you confront them directly, you're actually using up energy you need to, where if you have apathy, you can undermine them from within. You know, like, so your country gets invaded. You could put up a big, huge military action right there and then, and then lose all your army and your weapons. Or you could say to everybody, we're going to give you all a machine gun and stick it in the attic. Let them think they've invaded successfully. Give them a small fight. And when they're embedded in the country, then we begin a guerrilla operation from within. We become like a cancer within them. And that would be the, that's the best way to fight any war and in the modern era, you know. Remember, the best way, because soldiers aren't trained to be policemen and citizens know their country better than invaders. So it's very important to be, to not confront anything directly like that. It's very, it's a very interesting process. And it's actually a very spiritual thing, believe it or not. I mean, it's the, it's basically the concept of yoga, you know, is the, is wisdom. You know, this, um, you have the, the whole concept of, within the Vedas, within the Mahabharata, you have the concept of Krishna appearing when the world falls into ignorance. Now, that, this is what happens when you say, when things are falling asunder. So we have like the, we had the, the, the needle craft and the rona and all that stuff. There's some new developments of that by what I'll talk about. The needle craft and the rona and all that carry on, right? There was people who panicked and followed all the protocols and more, alienated themselves from their family members who wouldn't wear, a, you know, a face nappy or get the needle craft. And there was others who... The just wait thing. The just wait thing is what I said. That's a classic example of yoga, uh, because you're you see, you have to sacrifice the you have to sacrifice the absolute into the relative, in order to attain yoga. Well, actually, when you feed the absolute into the relative, what you're doing is you're stoking the fires of Brahma. So, you know, I, 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 I'm using Vedic uh, term descriptions here because. I don't know anything about other religions and there's nothing in Indo-European mythology other than say Odin sacrificing his eye. Uh, there isn't a lot more. So I'm just, that's why I'm using the Vedas. It's the one I'm familiar with. But anyway, the, the sacrifice of the absolute into the relative, meaning the, the removal of dogma from yourself, the removal of fixity of purpose, uh, the removal of attachment to the desired outcome in its totality, and then, you know, saying just wait and go with the flow is the path, is what stokes the fires of Brahman because you're sacrificing the absolute. I want this now. I want to take down Trump. I want Brexit to, come, to be overthrown. I want RT to go down. Uh, I, want, I want this. I want the political. But you can't, you don't have any control in the political system or the greater sphere of things. So you're destroying your nervous system, worrying about this and causing damage to your charismatic charge. At the same time, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not in yogi, you're not, you're not a yogi, you're not in yoga, you're not in, so if you ignore all that, follow your dharma, what you do is you're sacrificing that absolute into the relative, meaning there's nothing I can do about it except observe it, and I'm not going to take any hard sides regarding dogma, one side or the other, I'm just going to see and let it plays out, and, and time, you know, Kronos, well, there's one I can use, Father Time in European mythology, will make the outcome apparent. Just wait. Just wait. Now, so uh, that's why I say when these things happen or something blows or breaks in the media and the mainstream or in the world at large, don't immediately hop upon it. You know, practice yoga. Wait. Now, th this is because, uh, it's funny, you know, I was just thinking about that the other day. Uh, that movie, The Ninth Gate, and I was thinking about, the, well, that, uh, did that have anything to do with the concept of in Hinduism, the city of the nine gates? Now, the city of the nine gates within the Mahabharata is the human body. The nine gates are the two eyes, the two nostrils, the two ears, the mouth, the genital openings, and the anus. They're, they're the nine gates, and Prince Arjuna finds pleasure in them all. He sees two... He sees two beautiful things with his two eyes. He hears beautiful music and, th and gets his ego fulfilled with his two ears. He talks, kisses, 
has sex with his mouth. His nostrils smell of flowers, smell the fragrances of food. It's all Epicurean. His, 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 his arse removes the waste, and that's a pleasurable experience too. If he's gay, it's used for sex, and the penis and the vagina the same. So you, you go to the city of the nine gates. This is it, right? Now, but you don't, you don't consider that to be the absolute experience of, of, of human totality. Because this is this is the process, the product of action, okay, action, and you, there has to be something beyond this. So, people, you know, people who are basically lost in action consciousness, where every like, if I can't see it, taste or touch it, it doesn't exist, have strayed so far from the part of yoga that they are their they their chances of reincarnating into a better existence are very very low even if they're a decent person and that's why i don't you meet people that have very low charisma well i don't go around judging them and saying oh fuckers low charisma uh, it's they could have been damaged as a child abused bullied or they could have even been repaying their karmic debt from a previous life of being a, a permanently permanently sequestered in the city of the nine gates so you must remove yourself from the city of the nine gates, meaning the the actual direct experience, the actual matrix. The city of the nine gates would be a perfect way of describing the matrix from the human body's perspective of, you know, obtaining earthly pleasures, earthly delights and that kind of thing. And even pain and suffering and things like blindness and deafness and, you know, and removing yourself from that and becoming on the path of righteousness which is to follow your own dharma now you can follow your own dharma if you are trapped in drum from angel syndrome if you are trapped in you hate biden if you you know you have to break free from it now i have two friends that since they've known me I'm not going to name their names i've actually seen them transformed by not me lecturing to them but them understanding that I may have a point uh, without them actually saying it, they were both totally trapped in the system in terms of believing that it was all in the courts or all in the, in, in the political playing field and all that stuff. And all, any chance of anything was done in the material world, the, the city of the nine gates. And now they've changed. They've become more spiritual and as a result i can see how they've sacrificed much of their absolute into the relative and they've created a more spiritual philosophical a more pointly existential aspect to their whole existence and it's wonderful to see absolutely beautiful uh, and you can see that the changes in them happier people they're less uptight and uh they're they're more inclined to sarcasm and and not sarcasm man uh, satire than they are hate now and that's a that's a beautiful thing to see so don't you know again don't be you know i mean uh, we you know that this is how they control the masses the media they throw them from one thing to hate to the next from covid to anti needle crafters to Putin they always throw them something to hate and that's why they want you on the news 24 hours on the news all the time and then they don't report the real things and the real things are the needlecraft the needlecraft debts are off the fucking scale now I'm even getting people sending me messages and emails saying Thomas I thought your predictions of the amount of people that would go down with the needlecraft was probably overblown but he goes it's actually even worse than you said it's like my sister's mother my sister's friend my cousin's wife my mother's boyfriend my uncle my nephew my sister and they're, 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 they just dropped that out of blue and every last one they were needlecraft he said it is a holocaust out there and it's not getting reported for lots of reasons because they're giving you scandals and things like that instead to distract you. They're they're putting you into their quantum lock with their their, their psyops. So you have to be careful. And he said 
it, you know, one guy said to me today, you know, you probably save thousands of lives. And I said, look, I was only interested in saving my own life and the ones I love. And that's why, I, you know, I don't tell other pe people what to do. But I said, you know, just wait and see what happens. It's a great way to live in life. Just wait. And those of us who just waited, avoided, you know, in, in Ireland yesterday, they officially discontinued, finally, supporting the trace track and tracing app and the Needlecraft ID, digital ID app. It was all stopped yesterday. Now, that was very significant. And that was very, very significant. And the country is blowing up in different ways, mostly because of... Uh, the people are not putting up with the whole woke agenda and the government is desperate to try and shut everything down but the important thing is is to keep on just wait and stay on the path of righteousness don't play on their chessboard oh my god that's important never go into never try to fight a war on someone else's battlefield never ever try that never try you know that, 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 if someone else draws up the battle plan don't fight that battle and remember, that's what they, when you go into the establishment's domain, when then you enter into their magic circle, that's what's happened. And what happens when you enter into a magic circle and you're not fully protected? You become possessed, fascinated, and then destroyed, and you lose your soul. Don't lose your soul. Just wait. Get, you know, we all have to be like, you know, spies and agents. We have to just not, not investigate so much, but wait for things to manifest and go, that'll be useful that'll actually help my life better at the same time don't be getting I, I get people sending me mess all these links and they're obsessed you can see like it's like one one person sends me non-stop links of things happening in the Irish news you know like this guy that guy look what happened there look what and it's like these people are so quantum locked with the matrix they have no chance of escaping it what does this what does being obsessed with the the, the corporate news media actually achieve nothing it just achieves nothing except destroys your charisma, robs you of your dharma, and traps you in the city of the nine gates. So uh, I might make another video later, and uh, see the sun is coming out, and that's a good sign. And have a beautiful weekend, and I fucking love you all, and sanguinosis, and uh, I'll t I might I'll definitely be back on tomorrow, but I'll I might talk a little later. Look after yourselves. God bless, love.